You've heard me say multiple times on this channel that we should do what the central banks do and hold gold. The saying, be your own bank, certainly applies. But central banks and people use gold in very different ways. I'll explain in this video as we explore. Gold. Most of us see it as a store of value. It has many common denominators why separate entities use gold. I'm going to give you a recent case study on how this is exactly uh, making itself known in, in the world marketplace. You know, gold is tracked and priced on the markets, and central banks have been accumulating it at record pace. And by the way, there are more and more individuals that are accumulating gold as well, too. And we know that's been an ongoing case in the East, but even more so increasingly in the West. And the United States of America, according to the figures, the latest figures, has the most gold in its central bank. And it utilizes and stores that gold and has for many, many years, if you believe it's actually there. We've not had an audit of the of gold holdings ever in the United States. However, there has been um, a, a public audit that was done in 1953 or 1954, but many people feel that that audit didn't go far enough. There's been media uh, events around showing some of the gold inside of Fort Knox, but nonetheless, there's not been since then any kind of real uh, transparent um, operation that allows uh, the United States to have the actual absolute confidence that it's there. I believe it's there, but many don't, and I can understand why. Other nations, including Russia, have actually shown their gold even recently. China is well known for having a, a lot of gold and for buying a lot of it and producing a lot of it. They're one of the top producers of gold uh, in the world. However, they aren't very transparent either. And so they may not have as much gold as they say, or they may have a whole lot more than what they say. And by the way, we could as well. They are fairly secretive about it. The official holdings has reported to the World Gold Council another matter as well, too. And that's one of the similarities I think that we probably should have with some of these central banks is maybe not be so transparent as to the gold holdings that we have. However, some of us in this community have actually put ourselves out there and actually shown how much gold we have. Um, and uh, that can be a risk in and of itself uh, if you don't uh, safeguard it and you aren't very careful with how you portray it and show it and the like. Uh, security and safety is the ultimate importance if you hold gold. And so do not make yourself a target. Um, that is something that we should do to protect ourselves. Central banks, you know they guard their gold well. We should do the same as well. So that's one way that we can uh, differentiate ourselves or, or at the same time uh, do the same thing that central banks do. Protect your gold. Protect your holdings. Protect and store your wealth in a safe and secure way that protects not only the gold in your possession and other precious metals, but also your family. So I'm going to be referencing a recent story from the New York Times of all places that talks about the latest on how the Chinese are using their gold compared to the Chinese people are using their gold. And we can use this as a, as a lesson here. The overall theme of this I'll talk about later in the video. Affluent Chinese have moved hundreds of billions of dollars out of the country this year, seizing on the end of COVID precautions that had almost completely sealed China's borders for nearly three years. They are using their savings to buy overseas apartments, stocks, and insurance policies. Able to fly again to Tokyo, London, and New York, Chinese travelers have bought apartments in Japan and poured money into accounts in the United States or Europe that pay higher interest than in China, where rates are low and falling. The outbound, uh, the outbound shift of money in part indicates an unease inside China about the sputtering recovery after the pandemic, as well as the deeper problems like an alarming slowdown in real estate, the main storehouse of wealth for families. 
For some people, it is also a reaction to fears about the direction of the economy under China's leader Xi Jinping, who has cracked down on business and strengthened the government's hand in many aspects of society. In some cases, the Chinese are improvising to get around China's strict government controls on transferring money overseas. They have bought gold bars small enough to be scattered unobtrusively through carry-on luggage, such as the one-ounce variety. Ma'am, and that tells you something. That's the power of gold and the power to get around the government controls. Gold is the, is the ultimate form of money, the ultimate store of value, and that's exactly what they're doing. It's pretty amazing. And they're doing that as well as foreign currency as well, too. Real estate is also an option. Chinese have emerged as the main buyers of Tokyo apartments, costing $3 million or more, and they often pay with suitcases of cash. Um, and uh, that's really, that tells you something. Cash really is king, but you know, gold is too. Before the pandemic, Chinese buyers typically bought studio apartments for $330,000 or less to rent out. Now they're buying much larger units and obtaining investment visas to relocate their families. And uh, we also know that uh, in, in China, uh, the, the falling real estate market has been uh, shrouded in uh, be able to waste, and as, as I reported to in the, in the past, where some of these banks and lending institutions are actually giving away gold bars to prop up the price of real estate. And that is something that is amazing to see that's happening, and that kind of filters back through and blessed by the Chinese Communist Party using gold to prop up the real estate market there so as to not cause a panic. So that's how they're using gold. They're using gold as leverage in the Chinese government. And in reality, most central banks do the very same thing. They have it as leverage and they utilize it uh, against um, to uh, show their importance and influence, especially in some of these Eastern nations. We saw it in Turkey as well too, where the Turkish government actually uh, which sold some of their gold holdings to their um, citizens. You know, that's actually a very good thing, I think, but it can be used in the opposite direction too, um, as leverage, in negative ways as, as well. Gold in and of itself has no agenda, so it can be utilized, and as long as people understand the value of it, well, they um, it can be used as this leverage. But mostly, people, because they don't have the power of these central banks, they use it for protection. So the central banks use it as leverage. The people use it for protection. Protection against the very same central banks that have policies that do more to harm uh, the uh, financial well-being of the, of the individuals who they afflict. Because the currencies that are utilized around the world, uh, including the dollar, is losing. It's a losing proposition by design, folks. In fact, we are at now a tipping point here in the United States where inflation is barely, uh, we're, we're in a disinflationary period, but still a persistent inflation in the midst of, of multiple points of rising interest. And as these interest rates rise and inflation persists, there's going to come a point in time where the Central Bank of the United States, which is called the Federal Reserve, will, will basically set up a new normal, a new normal where it's a 2.5% uh, interest rate uh, or, or inflation every year, or maybe even 3%. They'll be fine and happy with that because that's a new normal. And inflation will just be a part of everyday life like it has been in the past, but just more so. The new blessing, which is 25 or 3%, very well could be something that we see down the pipe. And they can do it because the United States government, through the Federal Reserve System, um, they store a lot of gold. 8,100 tons of it. They use it as leverage, as, as a sense. All else fails, well, we have the gold. And whoever has the gold makes the rules. And indeed, that's what they are. And those rules, by the way, do not do the best to serve us, the American people, or the people of any other nation from any other central bank. So therefore, it is incumbent upon us to have the same weapon that they have. You know, they use gold as a weapon. We use it as a tool. We use it as a tool to protect ourselves. They use it as a tool. They use it as, as a leverage, uh, as, as a leverage commodity. We use it as a commodity to protect ourselves. And I think that is the difference between what governments do and what people do with this object 
this store of value that has been recognized for thousands of views, years, this medal of beauty, uh, it certainly will shine on and continue to be that case. So we empower ourselves with gold as a tool to protect ourselves against an inflating dollar and against economic instability that arises. A way to protect ourselves and to liquidate if we ever need to for any emergency that may come up aboard in the future. So I hope this video will serve to help you understand furthermore about how gold can protect you and how it can uh, serve as a weapon uh, that governments can use it for. Uh, and of course, there's other ways that it can be weaponized as well too in, in illegal trade and, uh, and, and other factors, you know, for and no matter what. It has any tool, it can be used for good and it can be used for evil. Uh, we here though, most watching this channel and this video right now, we see it as a way to protect ourselves against the evils of, of a burdensome government that uh, and central banks that have done more to harm um, our hard work and earnings. Uh, we're earning much less um, and paying a lot more for goods and services out there. So this is why we have gold that protects during those times. We are our own central bank, but we certainly don't act like a central bank. We act in the self-interest of ourselves and our family and for the well-being of others by having gold in our possession. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.